I know you, Wayne, from uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. You know, yes. at that. I loved being on Curb. I thank God you brought it up. It's my it's my favorite thing I've ever done on television. Hi. 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 Come in. Hi. Come Hi. In. Hi, Dean. I'm Larry. I'm Larry Hi. Hi. Yeah. I know I can make something happen. I don't say I think I can make something happen. I can make something happen. I just wanted to be clear that it's just a dream of mine. I think you're pretty clear. We have an understanding. This is, this has to be buried. Yeah. Okay, we, I'm yeah. going to give you my number. Great. And I had forgotten, because I watched last night uh, your, your episode, and uh, I had forgotten that you came back. Larry? Larry Dave. Dean. Dean Weinstock. Oh, my God. Yeah, hey. he's going to be your next door neighbor. Yeah. Hey, man. It hey. is so good to see you. Hey. 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 Whoa. Oh, Christ. Oh, my God. These are, oh. are broken. Oh, Thank dear. You. Oh. Thank you. Oh, that is man. just so good to see you, man. That good is awesome. Good to see you. Good to see that you. That's great. Gee, I'm sorry about your glasses. Don't worry here. about it. Don't worry uh, about it. I'll send you a bill. You're killing uh, with, it. With yeah. the, best, the best sweaters in the game. Um, which I think Larry <laughs> comments on giving you the five hundred dollars so you can go, go buy another fucking sweater. I'm not sure he swears, but certainly is yeah. the undertone. Um, tell yeah. tell me about getting on being a part of the first season of Curb. How did you get there? Well, I had auditioned. I think it was, I had auditioned for the role of a blind guy in an early episode and didn't get it. And I thought, ah. Because I had never been on Seinfeld. So I was like, but then they brought me back for Dean Weinstock and had a very good audition. Again, it was, I wish I could say, it was literally like a piece of paper. I'm holding a napkin, but it was like a piece of paper. It, all it was like, you're obsessed with Julia Louis-Dreyfus. That's all it said. She played Elaine on the show, Julia. He's obsessed with her. He thinks she's just like, the most like, talented like actress Julia. in the yeah, world. Yeah, she's great. Okay, I think she's she not just beautiful. Yeah. Yes. And she's not just talented, she's sublime. Yeah. And Tell me if I'm going over the line here, but uh, it's always been a dream of mine to meet Julia Louis Dreyfus and <laughs> just meet her in person. And if you could just make a phone call and make that happen, that would be so great. Come in and talk to Larry. That was the whole audition. Like, not start. So I was like, immediately, I was just like, hey, how are you doing? I mean, I. So, and then I pretended that I had a picture of her in my wallet and, and loved it and luckily cast me as the annoying, obsessed neighbor. Oh my God. That guy is such, he's such a prick. He's such a mellow prick. I mean, uh, uh, my father's an attorney and so I've met many of them. <laughs> and that vibe that you gave him yeah. as an attorney is completely the Weasley attorney who's, whose uh, tone never changes. But, you know, all of a sudden he wants something and, and he, you know, you thought you were going to get it. But, you know, if I don't, I got, we got to get this thing. Oh, you know, I got it. If, you know, Julia, if we can. <laughs> I loved it. What was it like? Yeah, meeting? no, it was. Was it like meeting Julia or Larry? Uh, Julia, because that's a double, that's a, du that's a big bonus. I mean, you don't just get in every Curb episode that, you know, this right. legend is also in. Um, it was incredible. <laughs> it was incredible. I mean, I hold her in such a high regard for her comedic skills. I put her on like Lucille Ball level. I just think she's incredible. I just, I, I, I she's super, super talented. So I was thrilled and uh, we laughed, a we just laughed a lot. We laughed a lot and it was, it was incredible. I don't know, it was, yeah. We, you know, I got to do one scene with her. Come, nice come on you. in. Dean, look, look who's, it's Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Remember, this is hey. Dean. We, we went over his house the other day, it's Julia. This is fantastic. I can't believe we're actually meeting like, this is great. You were supposed to come the other day and you yeah. didn't show up? Okay, can I tell you something, sure. my friend? Tell me. When you make appointments, keep it. Because now I'm busy and I can't talk to you anymore. Go ahead. Keep your appointments. You know, I know my character's obsessed with her. And here's the thing is like, I love her, but I have, I've not seen, to this day, I've not seen every episode of Seinfeld. Like, once I see like six or seven episodes of a show, I'm like, all right, like, this is good. All right. I don't need to see. I don't need to. I'm not a completist. I don't know if you are or not. So, but anyway, it was just a, it was a blast, blast. And to be in a scene with the three of us, that was the scene. The oh three of God. us. I mean, that's, I know, I know. 
I know. City with legends. No, you did not lost Willard. on me. Not lost on me. <laughs> good, good. Nor should it be. You, you uh, auditioned for this program. Larry brings you back at, uh, in the seventh season. Does your relationship change? Like, did you become friends with Larry? Well, first you- of all, I had known Larry before. I know Larry when I was doing stand up. Okay. So he knew me from stand up. So, uh, yeah, I, we weren't friends or anything like that, but he, I brought him up on stage a few times. So I knew who he was. I think he remembered me from then. Um, you know, when we came back, it was, the, yeah, that, that was the glasses episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was, it was, it was fun. It was fun. Again, I played, this is a weird thing. I, I, Aaron, it's so weird that I just think of myself as a sweet, nice guy and like the role I'm most known for the worst human being on the planet. It's like something underneath me that's just reprehensible. It's so weird. I, I didn't break your glasses. It was the hug that broke them. It wasn't you specifically, yeah, okay. but you were the yeah. one who instigated the hug. I, didn't inst- I instigated the hug? Yeah, I came in for, like, no. for a shake. I came in for a shake and then I saw you make a move for the hug. So I went in. I kind of remember I said the hey, I think you're mistaking my hey for a hug. Even if I did initiate the hug, yes. which I didn't, yeah. that still doesn't make me responsible for your glasses. They're your glasses. They're around your neck. With all due respect, I feel like you didn't recognize me. Then I did the hey. Then I did the <sighs> shake. And then you came in, and because you were so embarrassed and so mortified that you did not recognize me, you overcompensated by a super strong hug that broke my glasses. Okay, that's an incredibly that's idiotic it. theory. I think because you're a needy person, you wanted me to like you. you just but yes, went, he came you, back and he was full on wine stock, full on wine stock. Oh, even more, he was like master wine stock because he was, he's more grating in that he's so chill about, about the, the, how he pisses Larry off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I, I, I think the term is passive aggressive, is right? That's the yeah. term. Fully, fully. Yeah. You were able to harness that. Have you, have you, you know, you say self described. Very nice guy. I'll agree. You are. You have been extraordinarily kind. Uh, but do you maybe know someone that's like that? You don't have to name names, but maybe did you pull that from somewhere or was it just easy? I had a very specific idea, which was I am going to be as charming as I possibly can while saying the worst possible thing. Like that at no point am I going to be like mean or anything. Like I'm like the most charming, easy going. We got to get something done here. We got to get that wire. <laughs> this is like, I'm on your team. Let's do this. <laughs> just the See, worst. And that. oblivious. <laughs> even doing that just makes I, I laugh. guess it's in me. I guess it's in me, man. It's not. It's not. No, it's, it's smart. It, it, it doesn't have to be in you. It, it's playing <laughs> the opposite. People often you'll see on Curb will do this thing where they try to out Larry Larry. It's like, well, if I can be more pissed than Larry, let's see if I uh-huh. can out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, there's success in that, too. You do the opposite. I don't think there's anything that makes Larry David more angry than that <laughs> level of unwavering uh, passive aggressiveness. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And so, wait, God, when I'm watching the glasses scene last night, I'm just dying. I'm just dying, man. Because, oh, and you can, you'll, 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 you know, and you'll pay for them. I don't know. I think then you suggest that he's going to sort of return them or something, too. Like, I think that that's yeah, what, which is like some weird lawyerly thing. Oh, you don't have to pay for them. You just have to yeah. replace them. Like, what does he even mean? Just like lawyer double talk. You know? My own father has done that plenty of times. Maybe that's why it is <laughs> so hilarious to me. Um, what did you, you f- did you feel a difference between the seasons when you when you came back? Because I mean, there 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 that had you know when you're in the episode, there has been no airing of Curb. No, maybe there was the pilot had been that one episode, right? The pun. But essentially, there's no. It isn't this movement. This it wasn't phenomenon. a thing. It wasn't right. a huge. It wasn't a huge thing. Um, yeah, I mean, by the time it came back, it was. Uh, first of all, they they used different cameras. They shot on video, like I think digital video at the time, as opposed to. So they, it was just a, I think there was a different, I know they've remastered them, but I think there was a different um, aspect ratio. There was, yeah, they have actually uh, remastered them. They have, okay. So you're more of a, you probably see more episodes than I have. So uh, yeah, so it was, I think they were sort of still finding their way in the sixth episode of what this was going to be. And then it was a little bit of more of a machine when I got there than last time, although Larry was so, it was just great. I mean, I didn't want to pat myself on the back, but he was, 
he just kept cracking up because I, you know, whatever I would just do like the stupid. <laughs> what did you call it? How did you describe it? Unrelenting passive aggressiveness. Uh, unwavering passive aggressiveness. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was so good. It was just like whenever and the next wave of it would come, he would just start laughing in the middle of the scene and then apologize like, I know we're late, but I can't stop. <laughs> you know, it was just so how good. Many, how many takes do you think you had to do? On the second one was more because he kept laughing. How, he how many do you think when you're doing the glasses scene? 30. Holy shit, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he couldn't keep it together because he was right in my face and I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to pay. I think also, no, it's no big deal. I'll send you an invoice. Like just the stupidest. <laughs> it's like, so earnest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. How Cheryl? Like just like it's like completely playing off. Oh it's my like, god, yeah. I can't deal. It's so funny to me. Uh, I think you. I think you'd crush me as well. Uh, I find Larry David laughing to be one of the great delights like i he he did kimmel's mean tweets and they aired all of the like enough of the outtakes can we talk about how jimmy kimmel <laughs> these people are so mean <laughs> jimmy kimmel always looking like he real upset that <laughs> oh man <laughs> i can't believe you had me reading this stuff uh... Jimmy Kimmel always looking like he. <laughs> One of my dreams is I'd love to get the outtakes from that because we oh. shot so we shot a long time on that, and he kept apologizing. I know we're late today. We got to push lunch. And, you know, <laughs> it was like, but he was really enjoying it, and I, it was just beautiful. I'll and I think there was a couple other tangents besides even the replace the glass. I think there was a few other things we went like paths we went down. Oh, God. Well, that's the brilliance of the improv you get to. Like you said, uh, they hand you a napkin and they say, you know, <laughs> glasses are broken. Uh, people ask this all yeah. the time, but I'm just curious your take, the difference between Larry the character and Larry the man. Um, well, Larry is just a, it's just a, it's just a slice of the man. You know, Larry is just a, he's a fun guy. He's quirky. You know, he's, he's like a comedian. He observes. He notices things. You know, even like how long, you know, stop and chat and all of that and close, you know, all of those like little nuances of life that, you know, he either he sees and regurgitates. And but I will tell you this, here's a little bit of curb trivia because you seem to be a nut fan for this shit. Um, on the first time at the end, I come back and I have like the book and I'm like and I do even more. It says a reward like that kind of thing. Well, there was a, a reason I came Thank over. You. Thank you. I found it. Thank you. Does that look familiar at all to you? Is that? Yeah, where'd you get this? It was in my house. It was under a cushion by the chair. I was just wondering if that was yours. <coughs> yeah. I didn't know. Thank you. Thank you. There's a reward involved with that. Just look right in the front part. It says five hundred dollars to the mm -hmm. person who returns this to L. David. Mm -hmm. I put two and two together and thought the L stood for Larry. Is that right? I'll get a check, Sherlock. Perfect. Per check yeah. is fine. Maybe check you can get yourself a new sweater. That was actually his book. That was his kind. That wasn't a prop. Oh. Where he writes Let down this idea. Did you? Did you glance? Did you glance? A little. <laughs> That's like a Larry David thing. Uh, I I did a little glance and uh, no, I, I I saw it, but I was interested in trying to like do a good job in the scene. I had a glance. I like, yeah, you would have. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I don't think anything stuck with me, but it was his handwriting and yeah. So he would see, oh, you got to pay, you know, I, you know, it's just his notes. He would make notes throughout the year and then write the scripts. Right, you said, which, he, from he, what he, I understand, he hated writing the scripts. So that was the hard part of the show for him. Well, it sounds like, you know, with the napkin handed that it's, you know, it's it was too... a piece of paper. I, I just know. held the napkin. I, I yes. am required yeah. to. Yeah, make... of course, do a callback. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's why he's the professor. Yeah, professor. of course, I understand why you're being a little annoying. It's a callback, <laughs> but let's. Um...